I'm Dagny. In this video, I want to talk about how to funnel or direct energy, intellectual energy in Ghana and the rest of Africa. In particular, looking at the responses and conversations that occurred on Twitter when a particular individual revealed that he apparently had traveled to Ghana with no connections or real money of any kind and got the opportunity to speak to the vice president of Ghana about building a new city, which really caused quite an uproar all at all angles, really, on Twitter. So let's unpack all of that. First, what caused this conversation? On Twitter, a, a gentleman called Dryden, or Dryden, which I will show on the screen, a gentleman called Dryden had tweeted back on September 22nd that last summer, which would have been the summer of 2019, he and someone named Charlie Callanan flew to Africa to figure out how to build a city. They had zero connections, but they networked their way into the upper echelons of multiple African governments, including meeting the vice president of Ghana. And in his thread, he spoke how they did it. I don't know who this person is. I don't know what inspired them to tweet this, but of course, eventually after tweeting it, and I'm possibly due to the responses it got, he made his account private. So of course the tweet was no longer available, but of course people took screenshots of it. That's why we can still see the tweet. What stood out to me even more was the sort of responses and discussions and sharing of personal experiences that started, uh, that kind of blew up on Twitter. Starting with Ghanaian entrepreneurs, from tech to construction and everything else in between, speaking to their frustration as to how can someone from outside who has no experience get this when they've been on the ground all this time and they, they can't, they don't have it. They never, they were never, their pitch never got picked up, etc. And then there were also others who responded saying things like, you know, what, they don't see the problem with it other than this person had the audacity to do what they did. And maybe we should learn from that. Then others brought into conversation, well, even, even diasporans, African diasporans who come in with their accents and possibly money or connections or something. And they, they get to skip, almost they get to skip the line or those that they have interacted with give the impression or are really behaving in a way that is not conducive to collaboration or cooperation from the people who are already there. This got me thinking. I keep on hearing this recurring sentiment of resentment and frustration due to not being, feeling as if you're not being valued, feeling as if you're not being given the chance to do what you know you can do or know what you would like to do. It got me thinking about this cycle that I've observed, I've heard about from a distance, but then also observed in real time. And we're taking Ghana, for instance, because I see it in real time in Ghana. And I'm not sure if this is a generational thing or an industry thing or a tribal thing. Let's say I'm seeing examples of certain groups. I see the young energetic group. And when I say young, they could be kids, but they're also, I'm really speaking to like young adults who are so hungry for information and for opportunities and will grasp at anything that they can grab on and are really taking it seriously. You know, they really are doing the research. They really are practicing their craft and they have this zeal of knowing things can be better and knowing that they want to, they want to be a part of that. Then I see the next group where you fast forward a decade or so and they may or may not have a job and that energy that they did have before has become filled with frustration and burnout and yes, still doing what you're trying to do, but don't feel inspired anymore or don't feel like it's worth it anymore and tend to then, I don't want to say settle, but tend to go into a mode of 
I'm just paying my bills and I don't really care about anything else and I'm not expecting anything because, and then the list of all the things this particular person did or the government did or this, per, you know, that sort of thing that was wrong is why they don't care anymore and they no longer have any sort of commitment to the energy they started with. Then fast forward another few decades and you have this group that are go in two branches. If they have authority or power, they look like they might be overeating. From the outside looking in, looks like all of their priorities stem from, I'm fine as is because this is where the power is and I'll just sit here and continue consuming it or overeating from it. Or they're the other branch where they're still the same age as this other branch, right? but they don't have power or authority. So they sometimes look like they are under eating and they only, the only thing they have to talk about or contribute to the table is complaints and bitterness and everything is wrong. And even if a good idea comes up, their automatic response to it is it's bad because all of this list of history that they know is bad. And it got me thinking, is this a cycle? And when do these transformations occur? Because if you see how this cycle works, all this energy that we started with, like fizzles out as the cycle continues and then ends up being funneled or focused on things that don't give the person themselves what they need. Neither does it truly completely give what their community needs. How do we fix that? As you may know from a lot of my videos, I believe there really is an opportunity for a new Africa or a new Africa renaissance. But the thing is, this cycle cannot exist in that new Africa because then that new Africa won't really be real because we are still squandering, suppressing, and sometimes suffocating the natural energy of the place that has so much potential and that can do so much if directed appropriately and given the chance. Where does the diaspora come in with that? Where does those of us who think like this come in with that? Talk among diaspora coming to Africa, travel, move, all of that. A lot of it is, you know, you can, there's, there's different branches of the mindset for that when it comes to what the diaspora is thinking of and seeking. And I put them in three categories. This is not an exhaustive list, but you have like one group where they really just want to move to a country in Africa where they can just be at peace. They live their quiet life, have their home and chill. That's cool. You then have another group of diasporans who they're coming to Africa because Akon told them they can be a billionaire in five years if they come to Africa instead of trying to do that anywhere else. So that's why they are going and, you know, and time is ticking and they're wondering, you know, when are the billions going to come in? That's fine too. Then you have the other group who, yes, want to create a reality for themselves that they do not have to escape from, but also believe in making an impact where they are. And it's not about saving people. It's not about changing people. It's not about imposing or gentrifying or colonizing. It's none of that. It's just, if I have the access or I have the idea, why not bring it here where it makes it is more meaningful? And I think each of those groups may have a different answer as to what do we do with all of this intellectual energy? Is it truly just money that's the problem? Because I get the sense by, you know, I'm trying to learn from what I'm listening to conversations, I'm listening to what people are telling me, like, what exactly is the issue then? In my mind, I'm thinking, okay, is it really funding? Like money is, is the only, that is the ultimate equalizer. That's all we need. For example, hypothetically speaking, if I could get access to grants, funding, resources, endorsements, investments, and just bring it and be brought, okay, here we go. 
we got the money, now let's go. Is, is, that, is that it? Or is it more? Trying to understand how to be effective in what I'm doing. Is that too simple of a solution? Of No, it's just as long as you spray money on it, then it's fine. Because I'm getting the sense that a lot of this, which is not only Ghana, other countries have this too in Africa, where like the government is the biggest employer, regardless of their efforts throughout the continent, they will always be slacking when it comes to really meeting the demand. Because the demand is like growing really rapidly compared to whatever program a minister put in place or whatever money came in to the country for whatever reason. So how do we diversify that focus so that this cycle of intellectual energy being suffocated and like smoked out does not keep on happening? Because to me, it makes me think of, did you ever see the movie Salt with Angelina Jolie? Now, I'm not talking about the violence or the killing or anything in the movie, but the notion that we can leverage each other's skill set if we bring it to the table and use it strategically. So instead of, and again, remember, there's different groups of diasporans, so I can't speak to all of them, but leverage the fact that, okay, if certain resources when it comes to funding or infrastructure and things like that, that is not dependent on the government, feel more comfortable speaking to someone that speaks their language or that they seem familiar with, could they not be kind of like salt where they will do those dealings, get the funding, get the contract and things like that, and then bring it and be like, okay, guys, we got it. Let's go. Delegate this, delegate that. All right, sign it up. Let's go. You know, like, is that, is that too simple of a concept? Is, is that, I know I could not be the only person who thought of this. Like, does that actually solve the problem? Because on the one hand, okay, projects need funding. On the other hand, it seems when certain people do get access to money, they change. And that energy ends up getting directed in a way that is not conducive for the community or it's not, it's not beneficial for the overall community. That is, this is what stood out to me when I was seeing the types of responses that were coming up about this issue of almost like a, like there's almost like a bottleneck where all of this intellectual fire is just like not going anywhere. So where is that disconnect? There are so many incubators and scholarships and talent hubs in Accra alone. Are they actually filling that void? Are they making any dent in the obvious endless frustration? that all of, the, all of these ideas and drive are experiencing. I don't know yet, but it's something I constantly keep in mind as I continue connecting with more people, continue building my own projects. Like how, how do I make sure that at least in my vicinity, this cycle does not continue? I may not be able to influence the entire country or the entire continent or the entire galaxy, but at least within my, what I'm doing, people don't get suffocated. People's ideas and drive and intelligence doesn't get suffocated or smothered or suppressed for the sake of that's just how things are. I think the fact that so many people resonated with this frustration of how can someone outside just pick up and go and I've been here all this time. So there's, there's a void there that really, that we need to fill. And I don't think we need to be looking at just one person to do that. But I, I do think that more of us should keep that in mind as we maneuver our journey and our efforts on the continent. So I would like to hear from you. What did you think? Were you aware of this Twitter back and forth that occurred? What did you think of it? What was your response to it? If you are someone in the group that, if you are someone who actually does experience this 
frustration I'm speaking of, how do you, how do you handle it? How do you keep going in spite of the feeling that this may never change or not sure how it will change? And then on the flip side, if you are someone who is of the diaspora, you're someone who has moved back and are interested in making an impact or are interested in not adding to the problem, but being a part of the solution, what are your thoughts on how we can prevent this cycle from continuing? Let me know in the comments and we'll continue the conversation. Also, please remember to subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and make sure to go to my website, dagnizanovia.com, for the blog post for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe. I'll see you next time.